Hey everyone, it's Anthony. Today I'm going to show you how to get this drum sound using the new Periphery 4 Get Good Drums Pack. Sounds like this in a mix. Alright, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the new interface. Uh, as you can see here, I don't have anything going on it. I have turned off my mastering chain. And this is the uh, inside of the plugin, looks similar to Invasion. Uh, here's some little samples of what it sounds like just in the, uh, in the, the mixer here. And uh, here's what it sounds like with my MIDI in the background. As you can see, I, I have some variation in the cymbals, some of the toms. Uh, the kicks are pretty all pretty similar. I got some ghost notes uh, with lower velocities. Uh, I like to keep my kicks pretty pretty similar. Uh, there is some slight variation in them, uh, but not too much. So back to this. Uh, here we got the kick. I don't like a lot of room in my kick drum. I prefer to have the direct sound of the kick. Uh, the snare, I have more room in it, uh, but I have this bottom drop down a little bit. I had these all routed out to their own channels in the uh, mixer, and from there I had bounced them out. And that's what you saw in the main mix. Um, the toms, I use this, the envelope. Uh, I like to reduce some of the... Um, sustain on them just so that they don't ring out forever again less room i want more of the direct sound of the tom um, i pan them a little differently than what they came stock uh, with the cymbals same thing a little bit less room i kind of want to use more of the room for the shells not the cymbals i prefer to use the overhead channel for the cymbals and as you see here they are all panned uh, their own ways i don't remember if I adjusted them much at all, um, but this is how it sounds uh, with the settings that I have. So now that we have that, let's move on to uh, the actual mix part. So moving on, there's a couple things I want to go over before we get into the mix. Uh, I do have some outside reverb. I've got the I've got a little dip in. 370 here. Uh, this reverb is from the uh, Slate Verb Suite Classic. It's the 480 small room. I maybe added a little bit of pre-delay here, boosted a little high, cut a little low. That is being mixed into uh, the snare, the toms, and actually a little on the cymbal bus here. Other than that, uh, I got my parallel compression here, which is going to be going the entire time. I'm using the uh, Get good drums, smash and grab. Uh, parallel setting, just tweaked a couple of these uh, to my liking. Oh, we'll hear that now. This is with all the processing on. You can see it kind of brings out a little bit of life and everything. Uh, so the settings are. Pretty, pretty similar to the stock, I did turn off auto gain, boosted up the output a little bit, and a little bit on the input, and then I just blended it in where I liked it. I also have that going on just the actual entire channel, the drum bus at um, about 13.8. Uh, you know, I just, I keep it mixed in over the whole kit instead of piece by piece. Um, you see, I sometimes have the channel, the sends active or deactivated occasionally i try it that way sometimes i just like it over the full kit uh, on the drum bus i have uh, the slate fg stress um, slowest attack fastest release i push the input to 6.7 uh, the output 6.7 just kind of you know evening it out uh, two to one ratio nothing here 100 percent mix this is what it's doing.
you could see it was really hitting more on the tom hits because uh, I, I like to push my toms up a bit to get them really out front in the mix. Uh, but the kick's only one, one uh, decibel gain reduction, snare about two or three. Uh, then I have JST clip afterwards, just on two lights, 100% mix, no trim, um, kind of to catch any kind of overs. So that's, uh, that's the main processing that's going to be going the entire time I go over this drum mix. So let's get started with uh, the kick drum. Uh, but first, I'm going to go ahead and bypass uh, all of these uh, plugins on here just so that we can start from scratch. And you'll hear it's the same sound as before, but with the uh, parallel compression and reverb. And you can already tell it's. It's pretty good sounding right off the bat with with no additional processing besides the compression and the uh, parallel and the reverb. Uh, there is a little bit of mix going on here with my um, townhouse compressor. Uh, let's see what that's doing. Uh, these are definitely my main mix settings. I always usually do 30 seconds, fastest and slowest. Uh, you know, I adjust the threshold to where it, it is good with the whole mix going, uh, usually right in between four, zero and four. This is kind of something I stole from Nolly in his uh, Nail the Mix, and also something I kind of took from a Slate video I saw. 100, I keep these two in here. I have one going at 100 hertz, uh, 0.71. One going at 60 hertz, also really low under one decibel. And then this uh, pushed up a little bit at 12K, 1.6. And this FGA, uh, 10K with uh, just in between uh, 0 and 2. I think you have to kind of shift or control click to drag that. I do have this uh, drop down a bit to reduce the amount going out into my mastering chain though because I do tend to mix a little bit hot. So now that we have that out of the way, let's move on to the actual individual drums. So the first thing we're going to go over is the kick. I normally start my kick drum with a transient designer if I'm feeling into that at the moment. With this I kind of wanted it to push out a little bit more of the uh, impact and then reduce a little of the sustain to shorten the sample up a little bit. Uh, I have both the SPL and this Metric Halo one. I like this Metric Halo one a lot. It's a little bit more rounded, I think. It's, it doesn't really sound as pokey as the SPL does. So let's hear what that does. But here's the sample. Here's the kick first, just on its own. It just kind of pushes out some of that initial hit a little harder. Uh, that's what I was looking for with it. We're now going to move on to the plugin that is on every single one of these channels moving forward. You're going to see this one a lot. It's the Brainworks SSL. It's pretty much all in one. Uh, I use the EQ, the compressor. I use the gate sometimes. Uh, I think I use it on the toms. This THD is a distortion knob. That's really subtle, but I'll show you here in just a second what that does. Uh, the compressor for kick, I always go fastest release. I leave the attack, the fast attack off. Four to one, you know, I just adjust the threshold to where it hits where I want. I use this link because to me, uh, it kind of pulls the kick together. It, if there's any information, especially in a stereo sample on the left or right side, it kind of, instead of being independent, causes the entire kick to be treated as almost a mono sound. So here's here's what this sounds like now with this engaged. And that sounds like a kick to me, a good kick. Let me show you this THD. I've got it at 44.8. I'm going to push it up all the way, and you're going to hear it start to distort the signal a little bit.
it's really subtle, which is why I like it a lot on drums, because it doesn't distort the actual sound. It just kind of adds a little bit of that, as bad as it sounds, analog vibe to it. So in the EQ, uh, 9.2K on the shelf, uh, pushed up five decibels just to really bring out the the snap of the kick. I've also got another uh, shelf here at 6.1, uh, three decibels, push it's very wide Q, so that way it's it's really pushing out the all that top end information to help it cut through in the mix. I've got a 379 uh, hertz dip at four decibels, kind of a wide Q. You want to cut out a lot of those mids in a kick drum so that it actually sits where it should. It should have low information, high information, and some mid-range information to help it, you know, actually be replicated on some certain systems. But you don't want to remove all of the mids, otherwise you just have this thud and a clack. You want it to actually sound like an instrument, not like not like you're hitting a piece of wood essentially. Uh, I've got a 62 hertz uh, bell uh, for 4 dB. And that's just, you know, pushing up that low end where I want it on the kick. I'm not using the uh, high pass here. I am using the low pass at 14K just to prevent a little bit of the, the extra top end that's being pushed by the shelf. Because I don't want, I just don't need that information. Now we're going to move on to the bus processing for the kick. There's a couple, only a couple things here. I like, normally I'll use an extra kick sample for certain things. And that's why I do a lot of my processing on the bus. Uh, you'll notice that for the snare uh, and the toms too. So on the bus, I have another EQ. This is where I do my high pass. I do it on the bus to keep the polarity in line if I have multiple samples going. It, keeps, it prevents them from being treated individually. And also I can automate this high pass on fast double kick sections to prevent low buildup, especially when using samples, uh, because if, you, if you're using samples, they're usually static hits. They don't have the same kind of energy. Even when they're programmed really well with a lot of variation, you're still going to get a lot of that same low-end buildup that you won't get with an actual kick drum. So I've got a 200 hertz dip, uh, mainly to carve out room for the snare. Uh, 700 hertz dip because I there was a little bit of a mid-range clackiness there I, I did want to remove. So let's see what that does. You can definitely hear that clackiness being removed by this. I'll solo it for you. You can really hear it when I boost it like that. And that's just kind of the thing I wanted to remove from there. Now this next one is something I started doing very recently. I don't have a real reason for doing it. I was just experimenting and I kind of liked what this FG Bomber did to the sound of the kick. It kind of pushed the low end and the top end out a little bit. It's a little bit of a distortion and it's kind of like a distortion transient designer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let, start it playing and then turn this on and off a couple times so you can hear. It's kind of subtle, but it, it kind of just adds a little something I liked. You'll actually notice I have the output reduced quite a bit, and that's because when this is all the way up, it is kind of loud. I'll show you. But also because of this next plugin, uh, which is another thing I kind of took from Nolly, it's uh, the Slate Virtual Tape Machine. I don't use this plugin a lot anymore, but I do like what it does to the low end of a kick drum. So uh, let's listen to that. You 
just kind of gives it a little bit more of a round low end uh, and kind of acts as a clipper, but not as hard as like JST clip, uh, which is why I opted for that instead of using JST clip on the kick drum so that it would keep more of the transient together and kind of soft clip it a little bit. So that's the whole kick sound there, and I'm only using this one sample for it. So now that we got that going, I think it's time to move on to the snare. So for the rest of this, I'm actually going to be using a different section of the song because there's a little bit more going on, and I wanted to show uh, the toms and some of the cymbals in the end. So with the snare, we're going to go ahead and just listen to the snare top alone. I saw I muted the bottom. Uh, and again, uh, the transient designer, Metric Halo, uh, this time I'm just pushing a little bit of the uh, transient, not reducing any of the sustain. Brings a little bit more of the stick out. One other thing you're going to notice as I do this snare is that the snare itself is not the full tone you hear in the end. When I get to the rooms, you're going to notice a huge difference in the way the snare sounds. And there's a reason for that. Because the rooms in this pack are really huge and explosive, and that is the sound I wanted to go for in this. So we've got the transient designer going. Here's the uh, SSL plugin again. Same thing, pushing THD. We've got 7K hertz uh, shelf of uh, 2 dB, 3K hertz uh, bell 3 dB, 400 hertz dip, 450 hertz dip. Pretty, pretty kind of tight Q. About 4 dB, that's just to pull out some of the, that kind of nasty range in a snare that's always going to be there. Uh, some people like to leave it and cut all around it. Some people don't. Uh, I tend to like a little bit of that out. And then the usual uh, 200 hertz bell at about 4 dB uh, on the snare. I am pushing the uh, high pass up at 91. Uh, the low pass I'm technically not using. I'm not using the compressor on this one. I actually have it disabled. That's because I decided to process the com the snare as a f whole piece on the bus here. So let's move on. I just got JST clip afterwards uh, to push some volume. Well, not really push some volume, more to clip off that transient because I am reducing it by 3 dB. Uh, you know, the THD on here is another thing I use a lot just because a little bit of extra distortion on pretty much anything in a metal mix is always going to be a good thing. But you have you do have to be very careful with it because you don't want to over distort your mix. So let's add in the snare bottom. Uh, we're going to this one doesn't have transient designer. It's just starting off with the channel strip. Let me just go ahead and mute that and show you the channel, the bottom mic on its own. As you can hear by that, I'm really pushing, uh, you know, 130 hertz on the high pass. I am boosting 8K quite a bit. Another 3K boost, 4, 4 dB wide Q, cutting 286 out just to kind of get a little of that low mid out of the, the snare bottom because I really want it just there to not really be there but to add that little bit of sizzle that a snare needs to sound right. And actually, I am reducing more 200 hertz here on the snare bottom, uh, just because like, if, you, if you listen to it, it's, it's more of the sizzle, high-end sizzle, rather than the body of the snare. And then I am clipping that a little bit afterwards. There's no real reason for me to clip it. I just kind of do it by habit at this point. So now that we got both of those together, they sound like this. So on the snare bus, I'm doing a little bit of extra EQ. This goes across both uh, the top and bottom. I'm reducing some 400, some 500, a little dip at 5.4K, 
I felt like it was kind of a weird sizzle there because when I boosted this 8K to bring out more top end, there was just kind of this spot that didn't sit right. So let's listen to that. You can really hear it when I bypass that. You can hear this kind of ringing node in that top end. And I'm going to solo that for you so you can really hear it. You can tell once it's there and when it's not how much of a difference it makes in just kind of reducing that th that little earworm that can sit in there if you listen to this long enough. It's it's going to sit there and you're going to really notice it in the end. So just get rid of it. And I am reducing a little bit on there because I don't I just don't want the plug in to clip going into the compressor, which for the compressor I'm using the uh GGD smash and grab on snare mode, grab mode. I turn off auto gain because I just push a little bit out myself on the uh output knob. I'm pushing the beef control 1 dB. Air control is not being used. A little bit of saturation there, only 9%. And the threshold is just the taste. So let's see what that does. See, I'm just pushing a couple dB of gain reduction there and only pushing a little bit extra out. That's because I wanted the snare to have a little bit more of that crack on its uh, on the actual spot mics, uh, which is important even when you're going for a more room soundy snare because if you don't have the crack of the snare, it's just going to sound like all wash from the room. So you have to have that there to make it sound right. Uh, and like I said, once we get to the rooms, you're, this is all really going to come together in a way that sounds very different than right now. And that's it for the snare. Uh, so let's move on to toms. <laughs> 